N5432 What up, meows? Come see me do stand-up. I'm going to do one night in Barfalo, New York at Helium Comedy Club, September 6th. And then I go to Toronto, or Horonto, September 7th, and then Winnipeg, Jizz Her and Peg, at September 8th. And then I do Comedy Vux downtown, September 14th through 16th. And then Wise Guys in Short Lake Titties, Puta. Tickets at ChristinaPOnline.com. And then buy my lipstick. If you haven't already, Lauren, I'm going to give you one. You got to wear it. I don't know. Do you wear red? I'll wear it right now. <laughs> I don't know. I've, I've done these. I've put my schmutz on them. Lauren Compton, everybody, is my guest today. Oh, oh she's brave. She's doing it without a mirror. Oh, oh my God. That was like grandma skills, dude. You did that so well. <laughs> it's just the feeling, you know, I'm just like, don't fuck it up. Don't fuck it up. Yes. Don't fuck it up. That was brilliant. Thank you. You're so talented. Uh, her show, First Date, is out now through YMH Studios. It is uh, on our YouTube channel. You got to check out my, th- your first person is my husband. Yeah. And boy, he's a lot crazier than I thought. He's fun. <laughs> But he's fun though, and he loves loves yeah. uh, finding actresses and actor acting oh, classes way listen, back when. Listen, don't even get me started. Were on you those in actresses. one of those acting classes? Okay, but but one time I will say we were watching, we were watching a show we were dating, and he's like, "Oh, I know that girl," and I was like, "What? What do you mean you know that girl?" And he's like, "We did acting class together, and that's code for I I banged her." So thanks, Tom. <laughs> actresses. Yeah. I mean, not shocked. Not sh- really. Yeah. I mean, I feel like actresses yeah. are sitting ducks. Right? I agree. You know? Yeah. I would have been more shocked if he was like, I have a thing for doctors. Uh, yeah, I know. Actresses are all hot and they're not too complicated because I don't, maybe they don't know themselves. Oh, they are complicated, but they're not going to put it out there. Right. I think that's the distinction. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he does like actresses. Oh, God. Well, whatever. When I die, he can go back to acting class. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it was it was riveting to listen to what a psycho he is. And I can't wait to do your show, too. And then we'll find out what a psycho I am. Because it's so weird when you get married, you're actually looking to figure out your unconscious stuff. And you're, you're attracted to people unknowingly because you guys have issues that burp, align. Yeah. Now, you're dating someone. Do you feel it? Do you feel? I feel like... Uh... We have very similar problems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give me, give me a good one. What are your probs? What's your hot prob? Um, he's a workaholic. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you know me too. I mean? Me too. I was before I had kids, big time. Yeah, big time. He's super, super into working. Yeah, a lot, which I like. You it's know, good. yeah, it's I'd good. rather date a hard worker than someone who doesn't work at all. Boy, I'll tell you, and nothing will kill a, a, a kiss a pussy vibe faster than a guy that doesn't bring home the bacon. Yeah. That'll make you not want to bang. Yeah. For sure. I'd, ra- I'd much rather have a guy that's very motivated. Yeah. And you're motivated. And then you two build the empire together. Yeah. And it's good to, to have things to talk about. Like at the end of the day, I always have uh, my day that I had and he had I his love day it. and so we have a lot to talk about at the end of every day. I love that. And he's got an interesting job and I'm constantly just writing dumb shit to on TikTok. <laughs> so Which is my favorite, which I love. You know I love TikTok. So yeah. I'm super pumped obviously that you're part of the family. <laughs> yeah. That is good because uh yeah I think men I saw this TikTok actually. That's where I get all my news from. That men um want to marry the woman that makes him feel safe to pursue his goals. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Like um, like a supportive partner is primary as opposed to like sex and looks and all this. And you're like, yeah, well, you look at the I'm going to reference some really horrible people. But you look at like Nancy and Ronald Reagan. Supposedly they were a really good power couple. Like they worked well together. Yeah. Um, Hillary and Bill. I don't know if that's yeah. a good one. But Jay-Z and Beyonce, 
I yeah. mean, you're like, wow, they they support one another. That's huge. Yeah, I just saw that Beyonce and Jay Z bought like a two hundred million dollar house saw that. in California. I know. It looks like a weird million. compound. I'm surprised. Is that it's not by the beach or anything? Yeah, where is that one? Let's look at the location because, as we know, location, location. I right. Can't, I can't imagine it would be. It not looked like, like it was in a big field. Oh, that's stupid. It should be in the Palisades or somewhere. I'm sure it Malibu. is. Malibu. Okay, let's see where it is. You probably need a helicopter to get there. See? Oh wait, is oh. that the beach? Yeah, it's right on the beach. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, that's probably like Malibu or Palisades. Well, God, I hope they so own part cool. of that sand for two hundred million. Yeah. But workaholic, yeah. The, so what are you trying to drown out when you're being a workaholic? That's always the thing of like, what are we trying to not feel when yeah. we're, when you're um, working instead of thinking and being? It's very hard. But I don't know. My therapist said it's good because like, not good, but especially if you don't have kids or whatever, like, yeah, what, what else are you going to fucking do? Yeah. What, what do you want me to do? Sit around and, and pick my nose and. Yeah. You know what I mean? I like to cook a lot, though. That's great. I'll cook like crazy long meals. What's your what's your jam? My favorite thing that I've made recently is gonna blow your mind. Uh, well, I was on ma- I I'm on it. masterclass, so oh. that you can learn all these really crazy. I love that uh, meals. I love so that. I made a lobster orzo mac and cheese, oh but God. I had to get the lobster alive. Whoa! And I had to cook it and, and kill then, it. Oh well, I I made him put the lobster in the water i was like i can't did you hear it scream no and do you know that's just the air escaping its body but mine had no air and then he tried to save its life for a little bit because i couldn't i had to still go grocery shopping and we got the lobster and he put it in a giant thing of fresh water and you can't do that Uh, because it suffocates them oh so he killed the lobster on accident okay but you ate it right away yeah i mean it was still fine it's delicious so it it died a slower death if you were a lobster, would you rather die from s- b- boiling hot water <laughs> or slowly suffocate in fresh water? Oh, that's such a good question. Um, I think I'd want to boil because you do it real fast. Right. Like uh, my husband does a cold plunge pool and uh, my friend Shauna tried it and it looked like she di- almost died of shock. Yeah. She just go into shock and you're like, I'm dead. And then that's that. Yeah. I'd rather die that way, period, I think. <laughs> 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 then, uh, so, okay. So you're dating a dude now. And 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 you're 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 ready for baby makes. Yeah, you're ready to fucking pull I'd the love trigger. That. Yeah, you're ready. You want to be a mom. Yeah. Okay. Can I tell you something? Let me tell you some top secret shit that I feel like a lot of women don't share with each other. I'm gonna tell you my safe, my top secret hot tips. Okay, ladies, listen to this shit. Uh, some some men, I guess, do just propose spontaneously, like in the romantic movies. Mm-hmm. However, Yana, I will submit. Because all my old bitch friends and me, you have to gently nudge to make that shit happen. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to, like, plant seeds and almost... Are you texting him No, I'm going to show you something. (laughs) I was like, what if she's like, No, no. Christina said. I'm going to show you something. But yes, no, the the gentle nudge. I feel you. My gentle nudge is... You have to. I have a diamond (laughs) ring. That's your screensaver. That's my screensaver. <gasps> so every time that he sees that. my phone, yeah. it's also the kind of ring I want. So there's no question. <laughs> so he can just see it. And I'm like, that's that's what I want. I want to I love just it. like that. I love it. <laughs> and did you tell him that the first time you put it on there or just like he found it? Well, so we play Candy Crush on my phone. Oh, like yeah. a very old married couple. Yeah. And so he's always taking my phone to play yeah. this game. And I'm like, if you're going to take my phone to play this game, I love I'm going to send messages <laughs> to so you. Smart. And so now every time that he goes to play Candy Crush, he's reminded. That's brilliant. Of what I want. Now, here's the deal, man, is that men. OK, women understand hints like you do that. And I get it. I see it. That's a scream. That's a woman screaming <laughs> in female language of like, bitch, this better happen. Okay, because that's a bold move in our world. But in guy world, he could be going, oh, she likes rings. Like, he might be that. Am I right, guys? Like, is that enough? Stupid. You guys are fucking dummies, right? I mean, it's definitely (laughs) possible that he doesn't get it. I'm telling you. Okay, so like that, and I agree. As a woman, I get it. But you may have to verbally say the words I I am ready to get married. Yeah, I, I do. You do? Okay. Oh, yeah. 
good. But this is for bitches that haven't. Listen, <laughs> this whole thing where they're like, it just happens. It's like, okay, maybe. But for all the women I know that are married, you have to make it very clearly. Like, I'm ready to do this and I want kids. So would he be willing to have kids straight away, you think? Or would yeah. He? Yeah. Oh, you're ready. I like your fire. I think so. How many do you want? I mean, we'll start with one. Yeah, start with I'm one. an only child. Oh, no. So I feel like... Same. Why did I go like, oh, no, I am too. But I had three stepsisters that didn't really count. I feel like my old. parents had me and then immediately were like... That's it. <laughs> We're done. And there was no, there wasn't like a, oh, let's have another one. Yeah. Was your, was your, were your parents older? Was, they were. That might be part of it. Yeah. Because it's exhausting when you're like, I bet. Old. And I'm getting older. You're not even. You're so young. Can I tell you? I had my first baby when I was 38. Oh, really? Second one, 42. So you're still in, yeah, look at your eyes. I swear to God, that's you're not. That's such a, that's great news. Yeah. Because you're on Texas time. And I know in Texas, like, oh, you're 30? You don't have a baby. It's But in the on the coasts, we wait longer. I didn't get married until I was 32-ish. And then we didn't have our first kid until I was 38. Yeah. So the uterus, just so you ladies know, you can carry an embryo in your uterus well into your 50s. Now, the problem is actually getting a good egg out of you. And that does start to decline with time. But if you want to go get your levels tested, the, the FSH number is what you need to know. And sometimes, you know, you can be fine. Well, in your 30s, I conceived with Clomid with the first one. They just give you a little pill and it boosts your eggs. Yeah. Easy peasy. Second one, I did IVF. I think it'll be harder for me. I have PCOS. That's a tricky one. Yeah. Now, PCOS is defined for people. Polycystic ovarian syndrome. So what does that mean exactly? You have cysts on your ovaries? Yeah. Yeah. Mommy. And so I think um, like my doctor told me it would just be harder for me to have kids but luckily science is great and i think Amazing. ivf is a definitely something that i will probably have to do mm-hmm. but then they also recommended freezing eggs so you can have some on the side so i don't know i'm i'm also looking into stuff like that yeah just at my age because i'm like well i don't want to rush it for him either like if no so i'd rather it happen when we're both ready but i am taking steps to make sure that's that awesome I'm, yeah that's why I would tell any but any woman here because like the the myth in feminism is that you can have it all. It's like yes, but you have to be wise and plan. Like especially if you want to have a career, I would suggest freezing your eggs. Yeah. I froze my eggs before I did IVF, so I froze my eggs like right when I turned forty because mm-hmm. I was like, oof, if I try to have a baby naturally at forty, the rate for miscarriage is now way higher. It's like fifty percent right. or something. It's a high number. Yeah, so you want to harvest those chickens out when they're like still decent quality and yeah. then you can make embryos with whatever the fuck you want if you freeze your eggs right uh but yeah you just have to plan and yeah. then also i agree if you're a woman and you're single and you're listening to this and you're like i'm in my 30s i want to have children like i panic like to take that panic off go fucking freeze your eggs yeah and now now like oh like you can put those embryos in when you're 50 and you're you're fine and it's fine yeah because you can you, carry it's the uterus saved is fine. them when they were good and fresh yeah yeah. Yeah. That's good. Good for you. You're it's smart. scary. It's always scary to like find things out like that. And then you're like, oh, no, because no one likes going to the doctor and finding out something like that. But I do think it's better to find stuff out. Get it taken care Definitely. of. Be safe. Yeah. Definitely find it out. Yeah. Just like inform yourself and then you can be, you know, depressed for real versus like right. faking yourself yeah. out over. Yeah. My age. Oh, my God. I'm old. Like, yeah, but bitches have babies older and older now and yeah yeah you're totally gonna do it okay so so now we just need to pressure your boyfriend to propose okay yeah yeah we can do it i've been going up to his phone you know how the how the phone listens to yeah your surroundings and i'm just like <laughs> engagement and Engage- diamond rings weddings white dress yeah yeah kids. kids and so hopefully his algorithm is feeding him ads when yeah. he scrolls instagram oh i love this with yeah, I, am I fucked up? <laughs> no, no, no. Because I think, like, look, let's just be honest. When you're a woman, this is the truth. And don't let my, my husband's not watching in the lobby, is he? Okay, good, okay. The secret is, and no one's going to tell you this out loud, is that it's really the wife that holds all the cards. Like, let's be honest. <laughs> women make shit happen. Where are the behind everything that goes down yeah so you have to be deliberate in what you want 
You know what I mean? You yeah. steer the ship. They think they do, but they don't fucking do. You know what I mean? They don't know what they're doing. Yeah. They follow the leader. Yeah. And that's our job. And that's your sacred right. Yeah. To be the leader because you make the kids and you hold. We're the glue of the family. I agree. You know, and I think that the feminism as great as it was getting us out of the kitchen. It's like, yeah, but if, if you're in the kitchen, this is your domain, baby. Like we rule that shit. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with it. But I think Southern women get that. Yeah, right. I mean, I've, I never had a problem being in the kitchen, so I'd appreciate it if other women could stop <laughs> trying to take me out of it. <laughs> Support for today's episode comes from Honey Love. Honey Love Shapewear is the best, but don't just take my word for it. Um, the customer reviews are in, and people just love it, especially with wedding season upon us. This is the ad you've been waiting for. Whether you are a bride or a guest or looking for an everyday fit, Honey Love is your go-to for all things shapewear. Honey Love has revolutionized compression technology so you no longer feel like you're suffocating while wearing shapewear. I mean, imagine going to a wedding and getting to actually enjoy the cake and not feeling like a sausage sucked into your outfit. You will immediately feel and see the difference. I've got an exclusive offer for my listeners. Get 20% off your entire order with my exclusive link, honeylove.com slash WMMA. Support my show and check them out at honeylove.com forward slash W-M-M-A. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know what I love? They have the 360-degree bonded compression that smooths your tummy and your hips. It really is the best. And the built-in bus support lifts without underwire. It's an absolute miracle. But really, I like it because it keeps you snug. You feel held in but it's not too tight and and just um a nuisance to wear treat yourself to the best shapewear on the market and save 20 percent off at honeylove.com slash wmma use our exclusive link to get 20 percent off honeylove.com slash wmma right you're cooking lobster yeah I make, i'm like i live for the kitchen yeah barefoot life yeah, I like it too. Yeah. I like being a mommy. It's like a nice feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Now, was your mommy a stay at home? No, she was a business lady or what was well, she? Well, she was a nurse. I grew up, I didn't have, my family didn't have very much money growing up. So my mom had two jobs. Oh my God. And then my dad had a job. And so I, I went to daycare a lot. Oh. But I mean, I had a good family life. I just, I was in either daycare or gymnastics. And I kind of just grew up that way i saw my parents i feel like it's just very old school i just saw my parents at night my mom would drop me <laughs> off i didn't see my parents at night and yeah, that was like it. a business like a yeah, marriage yeah. that's like what it was that's what it was and so um yeah i don't know i i now i guess the people that i'm i've surrounded myself with all that have kids all have a nanny or two or like I, all this extra help and i'm just like yeah i never had any of that I went to like La Petite Daycare <laughs> and was getting like kicked in the face by like kickballs, you know, I trying know, like too. playing on a swing set and falling off. Like I, know. I never had anyone looking over me except for like, some teenager that had a part time job oh getting minimum my wage. God. And how'd that go? Were getting you, goldfish. Yeah. Were you crazy by the time you were a teenager? You must have been a hellion then. I, I was super focused. I was in gymnastics and I was oh, homeschooled. Good. And oh my god but then when that quit uh i had to retire because i was i was injured really really bad so i i was training for the olympics what and then one day it just got cut off i couldn't i couldn't work out anymore because my knee was just crippled Stop. and so then i went bananas my parents put me in a private school and mm -hmm. i just like had no friends had no social skills how old were you when that happened 17 wow so you really were on the track to go to the olympic like yeah. it was right in your grasp like yeah. 18 you could have gone yeah i was right there i was right so go. what happened that day i mean you must remember it like i just remember my my mom and dad like had a conversation with me and they were like you can't do gymnastics anymore your knees i've torn my acl mcl pcl meniscus everything three times how did you do that i mean what happened i was doing accident? a dismount on the balance beam and i cracked it the first time second time was on floor third time was on bars and then what the doctor what do you mean you did it three times yeah it, from 15 i was 14 the first time i did it and then 15 and then 16 and then by the time i guess it was at the end of 16 my parent the doctor told my dad he said the next time it might not be her knee it might be her neck and that scared the living daylights out of my parents 
because they thought about that. And then I was just immediately pulled out of the sport. God damn, that's heartbreaking. Yeah. Because that was like your jam. Like you were good yeah. at it and I bet you channeled so much into it. It's good that you had that as a teenager. Yeah. And then uh, I did the next best thing and I just moved to L.A. <laughs> Well, thank God you're you're easy on the eyes, Lauren. I mean, thank God you're gorgeous and you could reinvent yourself and, you know. Well, thank you. You're not like a pig. You, yeah, God damn. Because those gymnasts, are, some of them are hot, but not, not as hot as you. Well, I was a late bloomer. I didn't have boobs or anything. As a gym, yeah, it's hard you know? when you're working yeah, out. Yeah, and then it, when I was 18, it's like everything kind of popped <laughs> out. And I was like, whoa, what do I do with this? Yeah. All your hormones kicked yeah. in. You got your period. You were like, oh, yeah. I'm a woman. Fuck. So then you're 18, and then do you go to college? or? I went you- to college for two years. And then um, took all the fun classes. Yeah. Theater, Shakespearean literature. Oh, so you wanted to be a performer. And yeah. Then, yeah. And then... Uh, I dropped out. Yeah. I was like, oh, I have to take science and math. I don't think so. Yeah. I'm so stupid. Yeah. I barely got by on that stuff too. And then so you go to LA. Mm-hmm. I remember and then you got married. That was young. In, in LA. I moved to LA and I went to college there. Oh, okay. Where'd you go? Citrus College. Oh, yeah. I once did a gig there. Really? Uh, <laughs> no way. Yeah. In the lunchroom. I remember Citrus College. I know where that is. Yeah. No way yeah dog oh one of those sweet early gigs that Man, you cut your teeth cool. on oh it was bad i bombed pretty bad it was horrible um but that's cool. okay so you grew up like kind of like a latchkey kid i mean in terms of just raising yourself in daycare yeah that i just sucks. had to get out i couldn't i couldn't do i was born in texas and i just couldn't uh i didn't know how to operate or anything so 18th birthday out yeah packed my car up and i drove to la wow do you like your mom love my mom yeah she's cool yeah your dad's cool my dad was cool he died of cancer in 2012 oh i'm so sorry that's okay it happens i know i know it's that's a toughie though yeah yeah fucking dude it was wild it is wild okay well now you're gonna get married and start your own family yeah will you do things differently you think or, or the same as your folks um I think it'll be different for my kids because I don't have two jobs like yeah. my mom did. And I think that the lifestyle that my kids will grow up with will be different. And I'd love to put them in gymnastics. Yeah. As weird as that sounds. No, not at all. But it was such a great experience for me. Yep. So I don't know. Hopefully I have one of those nanny things. <laughs> but like You need it. Yeah. If you don't have a mother or family to help, you definitely do. Yeah. You, you should get some, help. Someone. Everybody needs help. Because even like we had some friends over and even just having two other bodies in the house that your children can jump on and talk to and play with is so helpful. Yeah. And, you know, I don't know. Some people look, I don't grow up. My family's not here and Tom's family isn't here. So it's yeah. It's Where's impaired. your family? Um, Hungary and Hungary. Wow. <laughs> That's far. <laughs> like Oklahoma no. or something. No, because I don't really, I'm an only child and then my mom died and then my dad's doing his weird thing and uh, yeah, and then my relatives, and my parents are from Hungary so we, like I have uncle and stuff and, but yeah, I don't, you know, this is it. So I was, that's why I had two because I was like, oh no, I'm, I'm going to die earlier because I'm an older parent. I yeah. wanted to give them each other at least. You know, is that morbid? Yes. <laughs> a little, but. But you're thinking ahead? Yeah, dude. Like, plus, I, I always wanted a sibling. I, I, it's so lonely being an only child sometimes. Yeah, I didn't like it. It was always like, I always wanted a sibling so bad. Like a sister would have been so cool. Yeah, I agree. God damn. Dude. I'm a late learner too. I always feel like I'm one step <laughs> late to the game. Like everyone will figure something out, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, hmm. And it's because I didn't have that. Like a brother punching me or a sister right. to talk to. So I, I find things out yeah. solo. Yeah, I think that's my Pajitsky effect. So if I have these things where like, I Tom thinks I'm crazy because I'll, I'll be like, dude, did you know? <laughs> 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 like I'll, every every week I'm like, did you know the fucking, um, you know, you can run the air conditioning all night or whatever. Like, because I never grew up doing that or just, yeah. yeah, like weird. I'm like a space alien because I did learn everything partially because we're foreigners but then i think too maybe there's something to that like i didn't know what a lenovo was a stupid computer uh 
Uh, yeah. See, Didn't she doesn't know. We, talk uh, we about talked about this? that on your mom's house. Yeah. We it's did a talk computer. About this. It's a fucking That's computer. Right. That's right. God damn it. I'm like, wait a second. I know this word. Yeah, I'm an idiot. There's so many things I don't know, but I also don't care. I, I'm very, I don't know. I'm into my own little headspace, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I'm very like my life, my world. Anyway, let's talk about some vag dryers. Um, what dries up your pussy the most in what men do? Any behaviors that you've seen a guy do that will just dry it right up? Breathe. God, don't you hate when they breathe? Talk. Ugh. Have opinions. <laughs> <laughs> you love men. What you're saying is you're a lesbian. No, I think... Um, a vag dryer for me. Like for me, it's VR goggles, and Tom is now into fighting wars in Fallujah with the this. And I, I know he's been doing it because it comes out of his den, and he's got like a ring around his eyes. Oh so you know. God, it's like ugh. People are having virtual sex with those things now. I know. Great. I'm so <laughs> excited to hear that. I'm sure he's already banging some fucking. She's in, he's in orgies, virtual orgies. By virtual now. reality is crazy. I know, right? Yeah, I'm I'm not really into it either. It makes me nauseous. I can't I can't watch it and stand up. I I yeah. just fall sideways. I'm like, uh. You tried the goggles and stuff. I I did try them one time. Yeah. I'll try everything once. Mm. Yeah. Did your boyfriend is he into the VR fighting wars and stuff? No. Oh, that's good. Yeah, he's no. He doesn't watch TV shows. He's not really into movies. He actually reads a lot. What? I know. A reader? He, he's on Twitter. Like, he loves to catch oh, up with yeah, everything yeah. on Twitter. So like, he's like he's, a current events guy. And a yeah. Re- what kind of books does he like? He reads books on architecture. What? Yeah. Well, that's odd. Is he like an architect? And He's super into design. That's cool as shit. And so, he, well, I have learned to appreciate, like, hotels and... Um, Specific. Uh, it sounds so dumb, but no. I usually I just go into a hotel. And I'm like, oh, this is nice, but I don't really know why. Yeah. And then he'll get really specific on what the feeling is and Ooh. architecture and how things are made and the feeling of the ground on your feet and all this stuff. And so it's just I'm like, wow, I'm actually thinking about why I feel good in Ooh. this space. I want to read stuff like that. Yeah, there's one that he really likes this book, and it's uh, it's called the A Pattern Language. Oh, I'm gonna write that down. It's like this thick. Oh fuck! Is there a picture? Are there pictures? And stuff? I think there's some pictures, but it's basically like the Bible. Of it's like architecture. The, yeah, it's like and design or the, what? The Bible. Okay. Apparently, a towns buildings. What's the subtitle? Towns building construction. That's cool. Yeah, I think he's read this book like four times. That's cool as shit. But he's got a bunch of uh, books like that that he likes to read. And well, it is interesting how. Um, buildings influence your mood and like if you go to Europe even like I went to London to visit my husband and I was like oh beauty yeah I forgot about beauty and there's beauty there's not that there's no beauty in Texas there's tons of natural beauty in Austin particularly it's a green lush environment which which is bizarre because we're in Texas it shouldn't even it's a desert yeah and you know the south is beautiful but when you think about buildings, and then it's so funny because you're like, you know that men have designed a lot of them because a lot of them look like giant cocks in the sky, yeah, right? Yeah. They're big dicks piercing the air. Yeah, like giant middle fingers. Yeah. Just sort of <laughs> just everywhere you look around. Yeah. And then there are dark spaces like the bungalow style. And you're like, well, that's depressing as shit. Why would somebody create a house with no light? It's, it's, it's it, weird. There's a traditional style of architecture. And then there's modern mm. and you can feel different between traditional and modern and modern usually feels cheaper in some ways. Right. And then traditional usually feels like it's been lived in. Anyway, I feel like I'm just a spitting, like just saying what he always says. And I love like, it. Yeah. Well, I'm curious about it because now like we, you know, we have this house that we bought here in Austin and I'm just now really starting to think about what it means to live in a space. And like, I think, because, you know, when you're an adult, you decorate your house or whatever. And, like, literally the first house Tommy and I moved into, I decorated it like a frat boy. Because I was like, <laughs> I want all the shit I can never afford. So we bought, like, Barca loungers or those fucking lazy boys. Like, nah, that go up and down, like, brown leather lazy boys. Because I yeah. was like, I want the ultimate comfort. And it was 
horribly <laughs> ugly. Like I, I was like, babe, I don't think I'm good at this design stuff. I never, never bought things for a home. You know, yeah. we, were, we were poor for most of our lives. And cause I, I grew up too, not wealthy either. So I'm like, I don't fucking know this stuff. But now that we have some means and we're adults, it's like where you spend your time matters. The environment that you put yourself in and even little things that you like. Like I only drink coffee out of cups that I really enjoy. Whether it's like a Bucky's cup. I love my favorite mug right now is a Bucky's mug. Yeah. That's so dope, dude. It's all blue with the stupid fucking yeah. chipmunk on it or whatever. Like it just brings me joy. I have a Waffle House mug. Oh, the Waffle House is the best. I love Waffle House. Yeah. And I yeah. and I I stole one because they don't sell them. Yeah. I asked. Yeah, you have to. I stole my Bucky's mug. I had to steal it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, but I love it. It's the best. Let me see the Waffle House. But yeah, the Bucky's one I have is blue. So it's like that pink one, but blue. And I stole oh, it yeah. from a house we Airbnb because I was like, yep, this one's fucking mine. The Waffle House mug is similar. Oh, that's dope. It's that white one. Oh, the iconic. The, yeah, the one on the left right there. Bro, they should sell these. Why aren't they selling these? I don't know. Yeah, I love Waffle House, man. That shit slaps. Yeah. That one in fucking Cracker Barrel is so good. Yeah. But it does make sense. Anyway, so I would, then I started to design my house the way I thought other people, normal people design their houses. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like beige furniture and shit. And then I was like, this doesn't feel good either. This is not who I am. I'm not this put together. Yeah. And then I did a goth room in my house where I do my writing and I hang out and it looks much like this. And I was like, I gotta do my whole fucking house this way. Yeah. Not goth, but just like, a little moodier and a little weirder. Cause yeah. we're weird. I'm not, I'm not a normal fucking, you know, house mom. I'm not. You got, you I'm got weird. edge. You yeah. Got I'm edge. fucking weird, man. <laughs> you know, a comedian. <laughs> yeah. My husband's a psycho. I like taxidermy. It's good. It's all fucking good. <laughs> I was actually just talking about taxidermy last night. It's the best, isn't it? Man, there's a, there's a guy that I know that taxidermied his dog. Like his dog? His dog that died. And then it's it looks like it's sleeping and it's like under his coffee table. That shit's weird. I don't see. know how I feel about that. To see the, the dog that you have an emotional connection yeah, to. Yeah, every day, just never wake up again. <laughs> like, I'm like, um, I, that shit's weird. I don't like that. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. But your raccoon here is cute. Yeah. This Olga, she's doing great. I like to, I like, I have a taxidermy mouse on a stripper pole too that I really like. Oh. Like, like stupid that. shit like that, yeah. Fun stuff. Yeah. Oh, I thought of my vag dryer. Go ahead. When I'm at a restaurant, and it's like a nice restaurant, and um, he points out how much something costs. Oh, God, you're kidding. Like, he'll be like, did you know that this, like, I order, I like ranch waters. Ranch waters. It's it's just tequila soda lime. Tequila. It's the, te it's the Texas way of saying tequila soda lime. Okay. And, uh... I like Cosmico's Reposado. Well, for some reason, they have put a price up on Cosmico's Reposado everywhere. Okay. Everywhere. And so now this drink that I like is like around $18. Wow. And that isn't very expensive for a cocktail. I agree. But he'll point it out every single time and he'll be like, that's an $18 drink. And I'm like, is this I'm, your boyfriend? Yeah. And I'm like, but I'm going to suck him. it down. Leave it. I'm going to suck it down. Yeah. And drink the whole thing and yeah. eat the ice. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. I'm going to, that's, but he'll do stuff like that. Oh, God. Do you tell him, look, it drives my pussy. I'm like, dude, I'm like, I know how much the drink is. I know. I am aware. Plus, it'll limber you up and you'll probably give him a beach later, right? For sure. Yeah. Because you're like super loose. Yeah. Like, I say thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously, dog. <laughs> that is an ultimate badge dryer. That's a badge dryer. Yeah. It, like it, I think cheapness is just like oof. And that's what's weird is he's not cheap. So then so it's just the it's the drink? Is it's he just like purpose? a weird thing. It's just a weird thing where I think he just calls out when things are overpriced. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And he doesn't do it all the time. Yeah. But when he does, I'm like because like then I, I feel know. bad about it. And I don't want to mm. feel bad about the drink that I'm getting. Because then it takes the joy out of it for right. you. Yeah. So I think that that's probably like. That's interesting. Because I think I shrink Tom's weenie. Because I'm <laughs> your boyfriend in that sitch. And I'll be like, $18. And I'll be like, babe, it's fun though. But it feels good. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm I'm the communist in the room. Well, that's always like, oh, so expensive. we're going to go broke again. <laughs> <laughs> It's weird though when you come from no money though that is kind of like your subconscious yeah coming through yeah 
So I give him a little credit with that. I'm like, well, maybe it's just because you grew up with nothing. Did he grow up poor too? Yeah. He did. So he's like. But now he's okay. Yeah. But he still calls that out and that's. Runs deep, bro. Yeah. I'm telling you, that shit runs deep, homie. Yeah. But you know what I found is that, yeah, at first I when we started making money, I was like, we're going to lose it. And then I was like, now I've gone to the other side where I'm like, if I were to be poor again tomorrow, uh, I would be so good at being poor. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I've fucking been poor and I can be poor again. I'm not afraid of being poor again. Yeah. And now I'm liberated. That being said, I don't want to be poor again. But like, right. Do you know what I mean? I'm not inviting poverty in any way, shape or form. Yeah. But once you make peace with the fear, then I think that $18 shit goes away because yeah. he's still in it of like, oh, that could make me bankrupt. I don't know. Yeah, it's a weird thing. Maybe, maybe not. What's uh Okay. Um, I have VR goggles. Oh, let's see. Do we have any um, voicemail for Vag Dries? We do. Yeah, we have one here. Hi, Christina P. Uh, I'm at the beach with my three-year-old and had the epiphany of the Vag Dryer that bothers me the most, and that is grown men with RC cars. I don't with understand. What? It um, incites anger in me when I see it, particularly when I have to explain to my three-year-old why he cannot have a turn with a grown man's RC car. I, I just, <laughs> it's so upsetting. And I wonder what went wrong in that man's childhood that he has to play with children's toys as a grown ass adult. Anyway, I just thought I would leave that with you and see if you agree. Hope you're having a great day. Thanks, Thanks James. Bye. What's an RC car? Remote Is- control car. Oh, like a Hot Wheels? Uh, I know what she's talking about. No. no, they're like the ones that you like drive. Like with a remote control, like they're bigger. Oh. Yeah, like you'll see grown men uh, with drones or with the remote. You'll see it in parks sometimes when you're like, this guy's like 30 and he's got a remote control car. It is so fucking disgusting. She's right about that. Yeah. That is disgusting. I don't remember the last time I saw someone playing with one of those. Oh, yeah. You got to go to the parks where all the perverts and car drivers. yeah. Yeah, that's fucking gross, dude. Yeah, I saw like a, I mean, this might not be equivalent, but I don't, I don't like uh, adults that have yearly passes to uh, Disneyland that don't have children. What yeah. are those called? The, the, like those, a, like a what season pass? What are those pass? assholes called? Yeah. Annual pass. Yeah. And there's a word for them though. Like, yeah, yeah. Like the annual pass. <laughs> those guys are like, what are you doing? Grow Just go, up. go once. Yeah. Go, <laughs> you know? Like, like you're so into it. You're an adult. You have no kids to take. Like that's so weird. Yeah. Like wait until you have kids. You'll be there all the time. You don't need to go. It's a little Peter Panny. Like, yeah. I never grew up. Yeah, which I, I'm thoroughly immature, but I, I don't know. There's something about the annual pass where you're like, this is what we do once a month. It's just too much time for this shit. Like, yeah. you're successful. Do you have time once a month to go to fucking Disneyland? No. Yeah, it's crazy. No. And then I saw an adult couple seeing The Little Mermaid without a kid, which, again, a little more leeway because that's a movie that we yeah. all grew up on, especially people my age and like, okay, maybe. I don't know. But it is creepy as shit to see just adults in kids' movies with, and they don't have kids. Yeah. I've seen it a lot. Where I'm like, what are you fucking doing? Here, I can bro? see how that is a vouch dryer, too. Ugh. I don't have time to, um, like, I mean, when I was dating and I would, have, I would have someone ask me out on a date and they wanted to do something that was like a whole day. <laughs> I'm like, dude, I don't have time. To go on like a whole day date with you. And on the first date? Uh, yeah, like no. I don't know you. No, baby, no. Like a whole day. A whole day. For a first date. Like calm down. They I'm love not that you. fun. They no, you are. That's why. He's like, I'm gonna lock Lauren down. Oh. Date one. You must have a lot of weird dudes, like stalkers and stuff. I do have <laughs> uh some stalkers. I knew it. And I've had to I know. Like I know. Yeah. I know, baby. I never I'll know. Remember. What's coming at me? Here's the good news. Once you're that middle-aged mom vibe, they all drop away. That's comforting. (laughs) Can I tell you, (laughs) aging is the greatest. It is nature's burqa. Like, I love the freedom of invisibility. That's kind of like what the what the mask did a little bit. People that oh, I still see wearing a mask. So great. When they walk around outside. So good. So by much themselves freedom. Yeah. With a mask on. I'm like, who are you? Yeah. You know what's even freakier is when you're pregnant, you'll have 
uh, pregnancy perverts. They come out of the woodwork. Like I would swim at a public pool when I was pregnant with my first son because I'd gained like 80 pounds. I was like pre-diabetic yeah, because I was eating in and out in Carl's Jr., every week like three times a week yeah <laughs> you're like you're like a guy's wet dream you're also, and i feel like when you're pregnant you're screaming like i let men come inside of me <laughs> yeah totally you know what i mean totally. like you're you're definitely sending that strong message yeah like i'm loose i'm here for yeah. it dude. and like no matter what happens i yeah. can't get pregnant again yeah. right now <laughs> that's true like you're just like an open cum vessel <laughs> like just come inside of me nothing bad can happen yeah Oh my God, I wonder if that that's an unconscious thing. It must be. Yeah, guys are like, I could just jizz on you. And like, inside of you. Yeah. Ah, oh, it's like a free, a, a free card. Yeah. Yeah, like I would go to the pool and there's this one guy that would, he swam up to me. I was standing and he just swam. He's like, How, how's it going? I was like, good. And he's like, I think pregnant women are hot. And then he just like, swam away and I was like come back like what what does he want me to wait (laughs) I'm pregnant and horny no it's so gross yeah that comes out a lot do you get hornier when you're pregnant yeah yeah towards the end there I was but but I was so fat that I couldn't really it was harder to fuck yeah it was just it was kind of a course a curse sorry because Tom (laughs) Tom had gained a bunch of weight on the first one too so we were both like the fattest we've ever been yeah and there was a time where we tried to do it doggy style and I was so fat that I couldn't maintain on my hands and knees and he was so fat that he you know we that's so funny oh yeah how did so you just both agreed that that uh, didn't no, we work? We just fucked a different way. You oh. just you just configure the fat parts together. Yeah. I mean, fat people fuck. There's you know fat people with babies, so it does yeah. happen. Um, <laughs> so yeah, 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 yeah. That's fun. So you do have a lot of weird dudes, but once you get married, the weird dudes will I think drop off because they're yeah. like, oh, that guy can kill me. The guy she's married to. Yeah, that definitely helped me a lot. Yeah, is that yeah? Tom will murder you. Um, yeah. My guy's like a big burly guy too. Yeah, he's very cute. He's he's got like the beard and he's tall and he's got a belly. Like he looks like like a Tom. Like a younger Tom. With hair. With hair. I know that goes too though. And my boyfriend likes to belly bump me. <laughs> That's adorable. Like he'll do that whenever I'm like standing up to him and I'm like saying something or if I'm talking shit, he'll just bump me with his belly. And I'm like, you can't belly bump me away. <laughs> like I'm still here. <laughs> So he'll he'll belly bump me. Oh, I like him already. He's cute. Yeah, that's good. I hope you guys. I, I can't wait to go to your wedding. Is what I'm trying to say. I know. All right, let's do other vag dryers. We have another voicemail. We don't have any more voicemails. Oh, I'll read it to you then. Where's my Where's my reader? Okay, here are we these go. your readers too? Those are the shitty ones. Those are like the Rite Aid ones. Try them on. Oh, oh my God, you're blind. Specs appeal? No, <laughs> am I? Yeah. Oh, whoops. <laughs> okay. it's, like, it's like VR. <laughs> <laughs> um, my biggest vag dryer is men who can't or won't try to fix things around the house. Oh, that's controversial. Let's say your vacuum stops working and he says, well, buy a new one or hire a repair guy. In my family, the men are skilled tradesmen and we take things apart and fix them. So my vag gets super dry when a man won't even Google how to fix an appliance. Instead, he hires a real man to come fix it for him. Amanda from Canada. Let me tell you something. I can see the clicks now on this clip. (laughs) The men are going to be fired up. What do you think? Do you agree with her? Well, I think it like, I mean, if I had a problem and the vacuum stopped working and the guy was like, buy a new vacuum, I'd be like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. That's how I am. I just buy a new one too. Yeah, but the same way. but when it comes to like hanging a picture, or any kind of handyman work, yeah, I definitely want to see. Like you have to build that bed frame, even if it isn't yes. seven hundred pieces from IKEA. <laughs> yes, you have to do it. Or if there's a snake in the backyard, you get rid of the snake. Yeah. Or like if there's a scorpion, you get rid of it. Or a bug. There's nothing to me. The building stuff is okay. Um, I'm not, I don't get turned off by that, but it is like, yeah, if there's like a rat in the house, you're going to fucking try to catch it first. You know what I mean? For sure. Yeah. Like he had to kill the lobster. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's not your job. You are a murderer. Yeah. You be the murderer. (laughs) (laughs) You're the psychopath. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, and trash duty, that's men. Like, yep. I do not take out the trash. No fucking way. No, no way. That's I don't either. That's his job. Can I tell you the best, um, the best thing I ever read? There's this stupid book. It is so stupid, and it's embarrassing that I'm going to tell you that I read it, and the bitch is right. It's called Why Men Love Bitches. Have you heard of this? I've read it. Oh, okay. I know the book. Right? Yeah. What do you think? I think there's like a lot of good points in the book. I think, I think so. I mean, it's basically just not being so available for a guy. Yeah. Making him work for you. I mean, Put, bring up this title. You have to see it. It's the corniest book. But ladies, I'm telling you, Why Men Love Bitches. If you're just starting to date a guy, it tells you how... Not to quote train them, because I don't think that's a good word, but how to set the precedence for how you like to be treated. Mm -hmm. And it's all about setting the precedence early so that like you can weed out the guy who's not for you. And totally. You're not wasting years with somebody. Um, and I always remember this one great tip. Um, her name is Sherry Argov. You guys have to read this book. It's so silly. One great tip. She's like, if you want a man to take out the trash what you do when you're dating him and he's like at your house, right? Is you, when he leaves, you send him off with a kiss and the trash. <laughs> it's like giving a dog a treat. Yeah, yeah. I get it. So that he associates your love and approval with taking the trash out. I'm like, oh, this bitch is good. That's so good. Yeah. yeah. There's another book that you, sh you have to read. It doesn't really pertain to dating per se, but it's just, I think, probably one of the best books I've ever read. And it's called How to Make Love Like a Porn Star. Oh, yeah. I have this. Oh, and Leanne Kreischer and, uh, uh, talked about this on, on, our, on this podcast. It's a great book. Yeah. Let's see it. It's Jenna Jameson's story. Oh. And what does she say? Do you, what, what do you remember? Um, I think just what a... Um, kind of like she was so at the front of her game, like even in like porn or whatever. Yeah, I love Jenna. But she was just a hustler and a, and a go-getter. And um, her story's just brutal. And she just continued to press forward. I don't, it's, I think for me, it's like just not giving up. And it's really a lot less about porn and more about her story and yeah. just dealing with the cards she was dealt. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. That's that book is really, really cool. That's so rad. Yeah. You know, because it's funny, the older like the more I live, the more I realize that nobody's really dealt a perfect hand. There are people who from the outside, you're like, oh, that was a, that's a really good hand. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, you know, here's what I consider a good hand being born in this country. <laughs> yeah. That's a fucking great. Yeah. Hand. You're already ahead. You're miles ahead and, and I'm not even being like saying this to be patriotic like America's number one I'm just saying from like that your standard of living is so much higher in this country and all you have to do is travel to fucking figure that out like if you're not living in in Europe or America or whatever, you know what I'm saying basically you could have been born somewhere in the Ganges swimming in the Ganges or whatever the fuck yeah you're here this is great um attractive wow you're born attractive huge hand uh, you're born to parents who give a shit about you. Wow, you've really got that. Now give money, put some money in that mix and resources. That's a fairly good hand. That's, yeah. That's a stellar hand. That is a great hand. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> a dream come have I true. Missed any, have I missed anything else? But, no. Uh, I think teeth. if you're not dealt a good hand, the best thing you can do is get really, really good friends. Ooh, that's good. To, su to supplement your family, yeah? Yeah. Definitely. Have people to talk to that can relate. Like, good friends that are, like, good influences. I agree, because you're made up of those people. Yeah. You are who you hang out with. It's yeah. creepy. Yeah. It's, it is weird, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. But to make the best of, of what you were dealt, like, you look at all the successful people in the world. I love reading their biographies, and that's that's it. That's the mentality is like I don't know what was Jenna I'm sure like had a horrendous childhood yeah like yeah I mean everything you could think of happened to her god damn it but I'm sure that being in but I think she was molested in the beginning and then she got into porn I think she started with stripping and then got into porn it's been so long since I've read that book but but it made an impact on you that's all that yeah matters. it was yeah. inspiring in a weird way because I was just like wow like you all this stuff has happened to you and I mean she's still wrote a book yeah it's fucking crazy right yeah i know 
I know. You just got to make the best of what you have. Yeah. And go as far as you can with what you had. So there you go. More veg dryers. Here we go. <laughs> I was just watching Love Island <laughs> and I've got the ultimate veg dryer. When men look at themselves in the mirror or reflections, my vag seals shut when I see a guy checking themselves out in the mirror. <laughs> Oh, that's that's real harsh. No, I mean, just primping. What are they supposed to do? Yeah, they got to look. Fluffing their hair and raising their eyebrows. Oh, a little lip bite. Any kind of flexing or butt cheeks in the mirror. Yuck, I cannot. Unless you're brushing your teeth. Straight guys don't need mirrors. Piss on me, beat me. I know, I know what she's talking about. I had a... Um, <laughs> Bless his heart, as they say in South. <laughs> I had a I had an ex who has a very distinct mirror face. Yeah. Um, and every all our friends knew it too. And every time this person looks in the mirror, they can't he can't help but do the mirror face. Or the yeah, print. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. but I think we doesn't everybody unconsciously have a mirror face? Yeah. <laughs> My boyfriend does that all the time too. He'll do his hair and he goes like this, and he's like. You, you know, I mean, I was just have long hair, but he'll he'll like do that and like look at himself, and he's like, but the face, yeah, the face. <laughs> it's like he's got to like make sure he looks hard, you know. He's got to be like, like, how do I look when I'm like mad at someone walking down the street? Okay, yeah, I'm scary. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Which is so funny because it's such the like women never go, how can I be scary and intimidating in the world? It's so foreign to us. Yeah. Mars is like, how do I not get uh, assaulted or like raped or yeah. kidnapped today? I have a weird yeah. thing in the mirror. I I progressively back up. Oh, I don't know why, but I'll find Ooh. myself putting blush on like a mile away from my mirror. <laughs> I'm just like, Herder. I can't tell. And I'm like, God, I'm like in the bathtub at this point. I just uh, get back to the mirror. This, and I just constantly just back it up. And I'm like, why am I so far away from the mirror over there? What is? I wonder what that's all about. I don't. I think it's got to be with something. I want to know how I look from far away. That's smart. Yeah, that's a better idea. Because anyway. when I get really close, I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh god, <laughs> back, back it up, back it up. <laughs> yeah. You know, it just reminded me, and I don't know why, but I have this weird OCD where I can't clean my plate. I have to leave a single bite. Do you? I have to, like, if, if I'm eating a croissant or a piece of, I have to leave exactly one piece behind. It's the weirdest fucking thing. I couldn't do that. Really? But I leave a, a, a little bit in my cup when I drink. Like, you like to, you, I you leave have a little to, sip. A sip. But I'll eat my whole, all You'll my You'll eat food, the food. Yeah. yeah, I don't know why I can't, I can't. And even if it's something I love, I'll be like, no, I don't leave. Does it make you feel like you've practiced restraint? Maybe that's what it is. Like, oh, I wasn't a total pig. I left a little something, <laughs> something behind. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe I'm, I'm rewarding myself unconsciously. Like, look how good I was. Look how good I was. Yeah. Maybe. That's really funny. Yeah. It's so fucking bizarre. I got to talk to my shrink. All right. Let's see. You women today are really picky with the dudes. Not being handy and, and, and looking yourself in the mirror. Jesus. Okay. Uh, I was watching your most recent episode where you were discussing what are appropriate bags for men. I'm a 31-year-old guy who has a lot of experience carrying duffel bags and backpacks back in my old smuggling days. Very good. <laughs> totally agree that satchels, men's purses, and cross packs are gay as fuck. I agree. Yeah. I would love to get your thoughts on briefcases and whether they're a vag dryer or not. I love the way carrying a briefcase makes me feel distinguished slash important, but wonder what women think when they see me carrying a briefcase, often dressed in a suit and sometimes with a briefcase handcuffed to me. Oh, dear. That's <laughs> okay. That's like... <laughs> Threw in a ringer there at the end, handcuffed to me. Yeah, are you an air marshal? Why, why would anybody have them handcuffed? Is he in the mob? Yeah, is it Russian like a mafia? briefcase full of money? Like, Well, listen, I have to say, when I worked in a law firm, I was a paralegal for a minute before I became a comedian, and I was just obsessed with this older man. I, I was maybe 23 or something, and he was like in his late 50s. And I was just in love with him from a distance. I would never do anything <laughs> uh, because he wore a beautiful dapper suit and he had a briefcase and he was just so official and I'm such a lawyer. Yeah. And I, there was something so together about that vibe. The authority. Yeah. The authority of a briefcase. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, I'm huge. 
I love it. Do you? How do you feel about a briefcase? I mean, I feel like it would date someone. Like it would like that. Like you are you oh. you are an older, successful. Like you have your shit together, and I don't go for people who have their shit together. Okay. I like it if you do have your shit together, but like you gotta have a little bit of a mess going on. Sure, I agree. Because I have to be able to relate to you. I agree. So I think I if agree. I think this, not that it's a vag dryer, it's just not my type. Yeah, I know what you're saying because there are people. But here's the deal, man. I don't think anybody's got it together. Yeah, it's a facade for it's sure. It's a facade. It's like they just don't know what their shit is. Maybe they're actually the messiest. Yeah, I would. Yes. Yes, because I, I would argue the ones that I've dated that were the most together on the outside were just a fucking mess Shit on the show. inside. Yeah, It's like Fifty Shades of Grey. Ooh. A little bit, maybe. Yeah. Did you, you know? see the movie? I did. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, it wasn't hot to me. It felt very pedestrian. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, you could tell Hollywood made it. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm not personally a big um, S and M person, yeah. But in high school, I went to a lot of S and M clubs because it was it wasn't popular, but it was the nineties. Whatever we would go, and I'm being like, I remember being like, "Well, these fuckers are dark. Like there is serious." Was this in Hungary? No, no, no. I grew up in L A. <laughs> I grew up in L A. But um, back in it was like the industrial it's industrial music and goths, right? So yeah. they for some reason uh, merged with like S and M culture. So there was a lot of bondage clubs that we yeah. would go to that played the music we liked. And there'd be like, all right, everybody, there's going to be some spanking in the left room. And I was like, cool, I want to go see. And within five seconds, I'm like, yeah, this is not for me. This is not hot. I'm not into it. And uh, it's, de- it's very dark and it's very, it's very real for the people that are into it. Yeah. So to see that shit on that movie, I was like, this is like vanilla fucking yeah. D- Disney S and M. You know, I think what would freak me out more, what got me about Fifty Shades of Grey was when I would see other women quietly reading it in places. Yeah, yeah it was so cool. And I'm like, whoa, like that's like the modern romance novel. Yeah, that's interesting. And so I would always know kind of a little bit about what they were going through in their life yes. or whatever. And I'd be like, hmm. Yeah, it was interesting because the most repressed people were really into that, I noticed. Yeah. The people in my life that were like, you got to read it. We're the most repressed. <laughs> and I was like, cool. Hey, at least you're getting it out somewhere. So I have a I have a, a deal breaker for you. Is this a deal breaker? Okay. This is from my feature act, Chase O'Donnell. <laughs> So your boyfriend, yeah. he's ideal for you, let's say. You're really into him. He is, right? This is the guy. And you're just, you're so in love with him. And it's been like two years and you're like, oh man, I'm going to marry this guy. This guy's the, You're planning the wedding, everything. And then at two years, he turns to you and he goes, it's time I'm finally going to share this with you. And then, yeah, you're like, like what? And he unlocks a door and he's like, these are my dolls. These are all my pretty ladies. And they're all porcelain dolls. And, and they're from different themes. And this is my Victorian era dolly. And this one is my goth dolly. And this one is my pretty, pretty princess from the 80s. And this is strawberry shortcake. And he just, he doesn't do anything sexual or weird with his dolls. He just really admires them and he likes to collect them. Is that a deal breaker for you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's more concerning for me that I didn't find out earlier well, he didn't, but he didn't know if he could trust you. And now that he, you guys are so close, he trusts you. And like, he wants you to be in on this very special part of his personality. And he goes to doll conventions, but it's just once a year. Yeah. Well, I'm just not into gay dudes. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I like straight men. <laughs> what, if, what if he's totally heterosexual? It's just like, these are the dolls that he grew up on and... He just loves little girls, little ladies. <laughs> no. It's a hard note. It's a hard note. <laughs> it's a hard note. I'd rather him hire a handyman to build a bed. You know? Like, let's let's go out that way. Wow. Yeah. See, I don't know. I feel like I, I might be able to deal with dolls. But then again, I'm the hmm. person that collected Pez dispensers. Oh, I like those. Yeah. I was like in a weird like collector phase when I was younger. Okay. And I, I collected Pez and like the little toys that you I get in like those. Happy Meals, but I've saved them all. Oh. And to this day, I have like hundreds of Pez. Dispensers. Hundreds? Hundreds. Now, are you going to display them? I or, would what do you do? never. <laughs> <laughs> 
Why not? I mean, they're part of you. <laughs> they, we, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I would also gladly give them away. <laughs> so you're saying you outgrew them. I definitely outgrew and them. And you would feel as though there's some infantile part of him. But then again, okay, Your Honor, allow me to submit. There are grown men that collect figurines. My dad was one of those. My dad collected action figures. Wow. And as we reach the end of this podcast, <laughs> I realize how weird I actually am by this doll thing. Why am I so judgmental? Right. Your dad was... An action figure collector. Fuck. And your mom fucked him? Like, your mom was okay? Oh, yeah. I mean, but clearly didn't want to get pregnant again. <laughs> like, <laughs> she stopped after one. Yeah. But yeah. Wow. And and did he have a special place for them? Like a room? And you guys weren't allowed to touch the figures? Um... I want. I mean, I don't think he had them displayed a lot, but okay. I know he had some displayed in his office. In his office. Yeah, but they were like, uh, like he had one that was from Alien. Okay. And he had. Uh, he was very into Laura Croft. Oh yeah, I like that Tomb Raider. And he had some Tomb Raider dolls. And and did he take them out of the box or was he no? They were still yeah, in the box. He's a real collector. So he was like, like really collecting them. Yeah. That's. That's Unreal. a deal breaker. Yeah, that's a I'm going to talk to my mom after yeah, this and be like, mom, should. I never really thought about it, but <laughs> <laughs> are you okay? <laughs> I mean, it was a deal breaker for me when I was dating. There was a guy whose house I went to and he had so many figurines and I was like, I am fucking out of here because it felt like I was in a five-year-old's playpen. Yeah. Playroom. And I was like, this is not mature. I can't fuck a guy who's got figurines over the bed. I mean, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I wonder what my mom thought when my dad came home with an action figure. I mean, maybe if this guy kept them quarantined to like a separate room, but it was everywhere. It was like on his toilet. It was in the bedroom. Oh. I was like, Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? Overboard. Yeah. Overboard. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much for being here, Lauren Compton. Oh my Compton. gosh, thank you for having me. I love you. I can't wait for everybody to see her new show. It is called First Date with Lauren Compton. It's out now on YMH Studios on our YouTube channel. And do you have anything you want to say or plug? or Watch watch the episode. Yeah, watch and the episode. I can't wait for you to oh, come on it. It's fucking on, bro. You it is. are next. <laughs> I can't wait. Um, thank you so much, you guys, for watching. Subscribe to the show. And until next time, stay cool, moms. Bye. Hi, mommy. Thank you for watching that episode. Did you like what you see? I hope you did. So why don't you subscribe? Just click the subscribe button and, you know, hit the notification bell so you can get notified. And also, why don't you watch another video? What? Watch one of these. You know what I'm saying? Like right here, down there, whatever. There's so much stuff, bro. I make these all the time for you to watch. That's why I'm here. I love you.